Since the introduction of the euro, the currency has been adopted by 17 EU member states. It is well known that practical preparations are a key point of interest on the route to the euro and are essential to ensuring a successful changeover. The preparations by Poland require particular scrutiny due to previous changeovers, and this can best be achieved by an extensive exchange of information. Where are you going to? Brussels. And what were you doing in Warsaw? I was uh, attending a conference co-organized by the European Commission and the uh, Polish Finance Ministries on the preparation of Euro changeovers, so, which is a medium-term target for Poland, but uh, Poland being a large country, uh, they want to be able to plan well in advance and they were therefore uh, interested by sharing expertise with a wide number of people which have been through previous changeovers. How will the euro affect the development of the Polish economy? It all depends on our preparations and I can tell you that there is a clear relationship. Better we prepare for that complex operations, there will be more possibilities to draw benefits from the euro. We definitely can benefit uh, from your experiences. We can learn a lot uh, about the approach of other countries, how they approached uh, their changeover process. Uh, and there are many approaches to pick and choose from. And so we can pick those that we consider the best practice and we follow them. And at the same time, we try to avoid slip ups, avoid mistakes that some countries uh, didn't escape. Poland is by far the biggest new member state country. And in terms of uh, introducing cash and banknotes, uh, so the cash changeover process, in Poland, due to its geographic size, will be much more challenging than in other new member states. And also other activities related to consumer protection, information campaign, and so on, they will also, due to our size, number of consumers, enterprises will also pose a much bigger challenge in our case than in our new member states. So there is no one size fits all strategy and definitely we will have to tailor it to the conditions that prevail in the Polish economy. How does the introduction of the euro affect the development of an economy, in this case, the Polish economy? Uh, it gives stability, it gives credibility. When investors are considering to invest foreign countries, I mean, what they expect is certainty, credibility, long-term. They are long-term issues. We were curious about what the Polish citizens think about the approaching euro changeover in Poland. Where do you go now, at the moment? Uh, at this moment, we are going to the church, <laughs> in fact. What is your opinion about the future Euro changeover? Do you think it will be good? Well, uh, my, my, my simple opinion is that it will be, it will be right okay, because it is good to have the same uh, the same values as the uh, like like the other countries. It can benefit in a way for the society and for single people who especially um, have have some small businesses. So maybe that they can be more competitive in the international arena or especially European arena. Well, it's definitely useful if you travel abroad and you don't have to change currency where when you often lose money on that. What do you think about changing the zloty to euro in the future in Poland? I think it's good because we're going to have the same value as the other countries of Europe, right? How do you think that your life will change from the introduction of the euro? Um, I think this entrance of Euro would lower my personal living conditions. It creates the feeling of European community that you have uh, 
common currency. But of course, on the other hand, it is known that the euro is connected with rising prices and life getting a little bit more expensive. Do you think that having the euro currency contributes to a common European identity? Uh, surely. Create and uh, strengthen uh, the European identity. Uh, so it's uh, essential, uh, one of the most uh, important things uh, for uh, our uh, common uh, identity, European identity. We should uh, show that uh, joining European Union it was the chance and we can develop in, uh, in the right uh, direction. So Eurozone is, also, is the next step, which is, I think, essential. Communication should start as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as they have the target date, they should start all technical preparations to set up all necessary structures, to set up very transparent structure of responsibility, to know who is responsible for what, and to communicate as intensively as possible about everything, and to be very open, very frank, and to make an information campaign. The Euro changeover triggered a similar preoccupation and fear among the citizens all over Europe. The Austrian shilling was changed to Euro 12 years ago, while Slovakia has been a member of the Eurozone since 2009. We interviewed a lot of people from Poland, the general public, and they expressed quite some concerns and fears about the introduction of the Euro to Poland. Uh, what could you say to these people? Why should they look forward to have the Euro in Poland? These concerns are very familiar to me because we, we are confronted with the same concerns in, in Austria 10 years ago. Uh, but, but meanwhile, uh, at least in Austria, the Euro is, is very much uh, established. It's accepted by the, by the uh, population. And I think meanwhile the, the people see uh, what uh, and how they can, can benefit on the Euro introduction. Austria is a small country located in the heart of, of, uh, of, of Europe uh, and uh, we see that in the, in the last decade the economy developed quite positive and all the uh, inhabitants uh, can see now the, the opportunities and what they can get from the Euro in terms of stability, but also in terms uh, of, of uh, economic increase. What are some of the fears that uh, people had in uh, Slovakia before the changeover and uh, what are the facts? Definitely the most important fear was about price increases after the changeover, after the calculation of the prices. The fact is that uh, in almost none of the countries that have introduced the euro have prices increased significantly. If there are any measurable effects, it's on the order of 0.1 to 0.2 percentage points. And uh, I think in the end, what worked in Slovakia is that we had uh, uh, quite a large basket of consumer protection policies. And in the end, people, based on their experience, have seen that prices have not increased and they were more happy with the changeover. The aim of the conference is to create an opportunity for the exchange of ideas and experiences on the practical preparations for the Euro changeover. Legal framework is important, general law for the adoption of the Euro, why general? Because we wanted to have visibility. The objective was to create transparency for the process of the changeover and provide assistance both to the public and private sectors. And the main contents in the frame, in the umbrella law, as we call it, the general law, was dual pricing, the functioning of your observatories, I will come back to them, and details in cash changeover. of preparations are needed in the public administration uh, sector 
starting from the necessary adjustment of the IT systems, for example, this is uh, a very big uh, a project within this uh, framework. The adaptation of the accounting systems, this is another uh, big uh, task. Of course, the policies have to be, macroeconomic policies, which falls more in my domain, have to be also taken into account that uh, there will be no autonomous uh, monetary policy anymore, so fiscal policy becomes more important. We had uh, one of the um, big schemes which we have done it's called FAIR, uh, which used to be called, it's short for um, uh, Fair Pricing Agreements in Retailing. And the whole idea was to try to get all the businesses um, uh, with this label called FAIR, which they have to had to put into their shops, um, to be able then to uh, prepare themselves, train their people um, uh, into, into the euro, um, inform themselves, provide information about the euro and conversion charts and things like that, you know, apart from obviously uh, ensuring that there is a state of IT preparations and cash registers and, and stuff like that. Uh, that was one. Then for the social sector, for example, we had about 70 um, euro centers in the, all the villages, a center into each and every village, which was, um, we trained volunteers um, to be able to assist um, children, old people, um, people with disabilities, uh, into how to handle the euro. Well, in the case of Estonia, we do see uh, euro changeover as an additional factor of stability and credibility of the economy. So I believe from the viewpoint of uh, investments and trade, it will have a very positive effect. We could see it already as soon as the decision was done. The, the kind of credibility to the investors has increased. From the very everyday point of view, it's, this didn't change much for, 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 for people because money is money anyways. Uh, and, uh, but certainly what, in which uh, hand it has a very positive effect is tourism because majority of tourists in Estonia are Finns and using the same currency with Finns is actually an additional benefit for, for Estonia and uh, makes us more attractive uh, and more accessible to, to the tourists. So I guess in the case of Poland, uh, what I would advise you to research is, is what would it be like to be in the same monetary uh, uh, space with, with Germany. It will probably have the same very positive effect on your economy. I think it's good for the uh, tourism also, that people who come to Poland, they don't have to change their, their currency and they can see the prices here and maybe they will spend more money if they see it's less in euros than, for example, in Germany, it's cheaper. Yeah, it's make, they, they, it makes it yeah. more comparable. Yeah. What are the most important elements of uh, an information campaign regarding the Euro introduction? Well, first of all, you have to try to uh, win the hearts of the people, to win the sympathy of the people, because they get a new currency they didn't ask for. Uh, the, the politicians, the government said, well, that's good for you, and you have to convince them that it's, uh, in a certain way it's very good for the uh, economy, for the prosperity. Uh, but you have to convince them, and as I said, they didn't ask for it. So that's one thing that you have to do. And you have to show uh, to the public that you can handle such a big uh, operation. Because uh, you take in all the old money and you push in a lot of new money. And well, that's, uh, that's quite an operation. And in many countries, uh, this kind of big operations aren't uh, going uh, properly or there's a lot of debate on it and then that makes people insecure and that's a particular one thing you can't have in the, in the introduction of a new currency. Other countries that have not yet adopted the common currency could also benefit from this conference. Probably you know the famous uh, saying of I think some Asian Greek philosopher said, uh, give me a fixed point in the universe and I will be able to move the earth. I think it can be paraphrased, give me a fixed date of your adoption, okay, and I can deliver uh, some uh, progress.
I would like to reflect some uh, issues uh, that were discussed, uh, probably from the Czech perspective. Uh, probably the most important thing is uh, what to do uh, just now, because uh, the technical preparations in the Czech Republic a little bit slowed down uh, because uh, we don't have a fixed date for Euro adoption. At the same time, we did a lot of technical preparations uh, in uh, uh, re recently. So uh, now we are just uh, debating what to do next, and uh, I would like to share some views uh, what we think is the best practice for the Czech Republic just now. In Hungary, what are the most important challenges that uh, you have to face regarding the introduction of the Euro? Uh, we have to uh, make uh, structural changes in the economy. And uh, so very wide uh, structural reforms. And uh, it may be beneficial to at least decide on them, and, but mainly to implement them before Eurozone accession. And as such, we can uh, meet the, the Maastricht criteria on a sustainable manner. How do you see the situation? Uh, when is the euro going to be introduced in Poland? We don't know, it's obviously up to them, but um, I think that they are very wise to do this conference now, which is, uh, let's say, relatively early uh, for them, because we don't expect um, Poland to adopt the euro before 2015. So they are uh, early, but which is very good because it means that um, their um, ministries and their administrations will uh, will have a good uh, picture of what this is all about when it will happen. So um, I think uh, it's it's very good to start like they are doing um, and getting the experience from the other countries already at this stage. And what are the do's and don'ts? of the euro changeover. Okay, uh, so, uh, you know, the be prepared, manage it well. You have to manage it as if you're managing a business. This is a changeover like all other changeovers. Communicate properly. Make sure that it is uh, um, participative. Listen to what, uh, you know, to what all the stakeholders have to say. And then there is a final point which is important, um, is that it has to be citizen-oriented, customer-oriented, consumer-oriented. You know, I mean, that is the biggest test as to whether the changeover is successful or not depends on one factor, how it is perceived and executed by the consumer. So, um, you know, you need to start from that. This is the do. On the don't is make sure that uh, don't do it quickly without making a proper assessment of the situation. I think that is um, uh, <laughs> undoubtedly um, a very important point. You know, don't rush into it start preparing, preparing as early as possible. We were emphasizing to the businesses that you need to prepare IT systems, of course, electronic card, points of sale. You need to subfront load enough cash and please talk that with your bank. And you need to be ready to handle two currencies, dual circulation period. In relation to the expansion of the Eurozone, we asked our passengers about the issues of the European economic crisis as well. In your opinion, is the EU still in a financial crisis? I don't think that either EU or the Eurozone is in, in general are in financial crisis. But undoubtedly there are some countries which have problems in financing their fiscal deficits and there are some countries where measures were needed to to support the banking system and I think personally that the presence of the existence of the euro and the eurozone makes solving these problems much easier than without the euro um, so I would say that uh, definitely there are some countries where uh, important measures are needed important steps are needed to ensure fiscal stability first and foremost.
that is not the crisis of the euro area or of the EU. We have the recession and I know that uh, European, uh, European Bank, European Central Bank tries to do everything he, uh, he, it can to keep the euro at the same level but um, it was harder when the uh, Greek is recessing mm -hmm. and when the other countries are also recessing. When uh, yeah, maybe we are in some level and some countries lower or higher, it's not so easy to make it in the same yeah. point. Is there a financial crisis in Europe? Uh, I mean, we had a, an enormous financial crisis uh, starting in 2007, but the real crisis started after the collapse of Lehman Brothers uh, in October 2008. So it was a, 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 an enormous uh, turmoil all over Europe, uh, especially where in the country where the banking system was very important compared to the GDP, which was the case, for example, in my country, in Belgium. And where are we now and what can we expect in the future? Oh, you know, the heart of prediction is a very simple, except when you are trying to predict the future. So, <laughs> let's put them that way. I think that the most, the crisis is behind us. Uh, the financial system is no more <coughs> in the urgency, but is still in a recovery time. The other issue is that after the financial crisis has impacted the financial system, you had also transmission to the real economy and that hurt the people also. I think that uh, if you have, you have a look to the latest forecast, to the economical situation, the most important problems are behind us, but we cannot exclude that at a certain moment one bank will suffer more than another. You cannot also exclude that in some sector we might uh, face some, some new challenges. So the economical situation at the moment is very volatile, I would say. Uh, we are in a situation where the things are progressing, uh, the growth is, is, is back, but with a high volatility, volatility in terms of sector and in terms also of region of the world. So things are going better, but uh, don't ask me to predict the future. <laughs> <laughs> now say, thank goodness we are in the Euro area because the um, strict discipline with which, uh, you know, I mean, we now manage our economy, the fact that we form part of a currency, um, a global currency, gives us uh, price stability, gives us um, economic uh, stability, it gives us um, the uh, possibility um, even in the, um, in, uh, to attract uh, um, investment and to expand on investment uh, once uh, that it is a currency that we, you know, which is a global currency and which is a currency that we, you know, that um, uh, all investors today are very familiar with. Um, so uh, thank God for the euro.